I can't explain it. I don't know why. But tonight I felt like drawing a lot of tiny flowers. So I did. Um, I think I'm going to put another hour or so into this and then put a black frame on it and put it on the store. Well, I didn't like it black and white, so I went and tried to color it. Um, I don't know how I'm feeling about it. Um, maybe I'll finish it. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll start over. I'm not really sure. One of those nights. Typically, I use markers to color my pieces, um, but because the flowers on this piece are so tiny, I had to resort to something much more precise. So I'm using a manga mapping tip, which is generally used for very, very fine detail. Um, and just to give you an idea of how small these flowers are, I'm gonna zoom in. So there's the penny. <laughs> That's about as close as I can get it while keeping it steady. Color is done for the most part. And I tried some backgrounds digitally and black is definitely gonna work the best. So that's the next step is coloring in the background with black and then it should be done. Just a quick note that I have to individually color each petal of a flower. So um, just wanted to give you an idea of the difference in each flower and each petal. It's done, and I really like the way it came out. Um, I like the way some of the flowers have faded into the background. Let me see if I can zoom in here and pan across. I think I'm going to be doing a bunch more of these. Okay, so I've decided I'm gonna do a few of this series. Um, got the next one kind of scoped out. I did have another mesh wave ready to go. Maybe I'll do that after. Okay, so I've got the flowers done for the next piece. Um, I'm hoping to get through the color tonight, and I'm gonna stick with the black background um, for the next few pieces just to see what it looks like. I'll switch eventually. I'm making progress, and I wanted to show you the difference between the flat flowers that I've just colored in and the ones with depth, which will really make them pop on the black background. There you go. On the yellow piece, I colored all of the flowers first and then put in the background. And I think for the pink piece, while I started coloring them in on the left, I think I'm going to fill the background first and then finish the color. I think that'll enable me to get a better sense of the depth and where flowers sit um, in the z-axis. You know, if they're uh, on top or in the bottom and then color it more appropriately. I'm going to give that a shot. Pink and yellow, done. I think for the next one, I'm going to switch up the size of the flowers a bit, maybe. We'll see. I'm enjoying doing this at this scale, so um, maybe I'll do one more like this. I think I'm gonna add a black background to this piece, just so I could compare it to the small flower pieces. And if I don't like it, I'll just um, have to do it over, which is okay with me. I started to fill in the background by outlining the flowers in black, um, but it must have been really humid in my house because the paper is very damp. I don't want to use a hot air gun. I don't want to risk affecting the drawing. So I think I'm going to give it a day, put it in the basement where it's a bit less humid, give it a chance to dry out, and I'll try again tomorrow. And hopefully I'll have more luck. Here's a quick close-up. The paper was dry enough today that I was able to do the outlines for the flowers. And I think that tomorrow I'll be able to <clears throat> fill in the background completely. And then I need to make one more pass on the flowers and it'll be done. Background is done. It might need one more pass just to get the finest of the white dots, but um, it's done. And I did a pass on the flowers. Probably needs one more pass, but the paper is getting really beat up. And I'm just not sure how much more it can take. Okay, I think it's done, done. Um, maybe one more pass with the black pen on the flowers just to give it some definition, but otherwise it's done. Um, I wonder what flower is up next. Well, sometimes I know exactly where I'm going with a piece and other times I have these pieces. Um, I started this today, not exactly sure where I'm going with it, but um, I'll probably finish it tomorrow.
We'll see. This is where I wound up with this piece. Obviously, I'm still a complete noob when it comes to watercolors, and I switched to a brush because the dip pen was tearing up the paper really badly. So, I have a lot to learn. But then again, I have a lot to learn. So, there's a lot to look forward to. Not sure what the next piece is going to be, but I have an idea. Hopefully, I'll get the outline done um, sometime tomorrow. In the wood shop today. Previously, I've been asked um, if the frames I sell with my artwork were made by me. And the answer is absolutely. The only frames that I sell my artwork in are frames that I made by myself by hand. So, if you're on my store and you see your artwork in a frame, you can be guaranteed that I made it by hand. Um, so here are four blanks getting ready to be made into frames. Don't know if I'm finishing them today. There's a lot of work involved, but um, you know, they're there. Okay, I've cut out the uh, frame opening. Solid piece of wood still. Um, next step is to route out the backing so that it can hold the art and the plexiglass and the backing. So I'm going to do that now. And this is after. So that's the front, that's the back. I'll cut out a piece to fit this exactly. And it's a press fit. Um, hopefully it'll come out nicely. All four frames have been routed and the inside sanded. Um, next up is the backing plate that fits, snap fits in here. But um, I think I'm done for today. I'm getting a bit tired and should be around power tools when you're feeling tired because safety first, right? So hopefully I'll continue this tomorrow. Back to frames. So the next phase is once I have this routed out frame, I create a backing plate. And I'm gonna try and do this with one hand, it's kind of difficult, but that backing plate fits exactly in the frame. It's a press fit. Um, so it fits exactly. And then the, obviously the plexiglass and the artwork and matting and the back plate all go together. And then I um, trim off the excess, cut a hanger hole, and then the frame, stain it, of course, and then the frame is done. And I typically add my wood burned logo to it. So still a lot of steps left to go. All four backing plates are done. Um, it's getting late, so I'm going to stop working in the shop, so it means I'm going to have to finish this next weekend, but um, this is actually the most difficult part. I snap or break a lot of frames at this stage because of the tight fit between the backing and the frame, and it tends to split the wood along the grain. But so far, um, these are all working well, not split. We're good to go. And here's what a frame looks like when it's done, but before it's stained. Um, so artwork, plexiglass, backing, cut out for wall hanger. Um, I even include a stand. I don't have one in front of me, but um, it comes with a stand so you can either hang it on a wall or you can stand it on a desk or a shelf. Um, I think I have a completed one somewhere in the house, so I'm going to find that and post it later. I found the finished frames that I have, and for some reason, they're not on the store. Um, I don't know why. It's a set, and this is what a finished frame, one of my finished frames looks like. Here's the backing plate. Um, you can see the frame hanger. There's my wood burned logo. This piece um, is from 2018, so there's my 2018 logo. Um, you can see it's flush. It's really nicely done, even if I did it. I think it's nicely done. Um, and here's what it looks like on the stand. So there's the stand, comes with it as part of the set. So you can either hang it on the wall or put it on your desk or a bookshelf. But that's what a finished frame looks like. I got a few questions about these pieces. Yes, um, I will be putting them on the store. It's a set. Um, I was considering selling them separately, but I think they go together. And hopefully I'll have them on the store sometime this week, but if not, definitely next weekend. Yesterday I showed you this example of one of my handmade wood frames with my artwork in it. And I realized I had another piece in the house, which I've shown previously. 
and it's the original size that I started creating first. This is one of the early pieces. My son asked me if he could have it, and so of course I gave it to him, but this is an example of the small ones. Um, same construction, same single piece of wood with a backing flush. Um, has the frame hanger, has my wood burned logo. I still love these sizes and I still continue to make them. I think they're great for small, personal, intimate spaces, much more so than the big ones. This is how I create the backing. So I put in the, I'm gonna try and do this with one hand, the plexiglass, the matting. This is all for sizing. It's not the actual pieces, the artwork. The matting to protect it from the wood and then the backing plate. And now I cut off that extra part. So that's how a backing is done. Okay, the backing is done. Uh, it's flush. Uh, the only thing left to do is to cut the hanger slot and wood burner logo. Fortunately, I'm having a challenge because I switched to a very thick acrylic for the new frames. And I'm gonna show you, it doesn't leave much room for the backing plate. There's a huge difference in the depth, and the thickness. Um, so I might switch back to the old acrylic to get that depth back. It um, gives me room for the hanger slot and it makes the backing fit a lot snugger and tighter and it's a better fit overall. So I think I'm gonna switch back. Getting ready to do the first pass of stain. So I've got the drying rack. I've sanded the pieces um, and I've done my wood burn logo. So I'm going to do the first pass and we'll see what that looks like when it's done. First layer of stain is almost dry. For this piece I decided to go with a stain that highlights the natural wood grain because these pieces will hold flower pieces. I wanted to ensure that the viewer makes the connection between the wood and the flowers and nature, as opposed to this stain, which is extremely dark and black. While you can still make out some of the grain, it's not as nice as um, this. So all four pieces will have this stain on it. Uh, one more pass and then it will be dry and done. And then I can assemble the um, artwork. Second coat of stain is done. It's not dry dry, but it's dry enough that I can handle it without leaving a fingerprint. So uh, that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. And there's the backing plate. And I finished another frame. So this one needs to get stained. Um, the next two have portrait or portrait. So the hanger hole has to go this way, but other than that, it's the same thing. Um, and then I have to mount the artwork. So one of my least favorite parts of this entire process is cutting the mats. Um, so we'll see if I can do one of those or two of those tomorrow. Depends. We'll see. One piece is done. Um, it's not completely done. I have to sign the matting and the back of the piece of the art. There's no room. I don't want to sign over the artwork. And um, I need to open it up and make sure I get most of the dust out. That's one of the hardest parts. Um, but yeah, and I have to make a stand. I wait till the end for that. So there's one piece. That's what it looks like in one of my handmade wood frames. Here are the frame pieces uh, I posted today in my handmade wood frames. Um, it's not finished yet. I still have to sign this. Um, but here's what it looks like, the, the front and then the back. There's my 2019 logo. Uh, this is probably the last set of art with the 2019 logo. Um, the next set, if you remember, um, I've said are going to be portrait. But there's a problem. The frames are already sort of roughed out, um, have a horizontal grain. And <clears throat> what I'd like to do is, because they're a portrait, I want the grain to match. So I need to get different wood. Um, the only wood I have in the house with that grain is this, which is slightly different than that. So you notice the grain will match horizontal in portrait mode. So I might have to get more wood to match this so that it's close, but maybe the contrast is nice. Um, I still have to think on that. Maybe either way, 
I'll make the frames and then uh, see how they come out. So probably do that this weekend. Can't do it during the week. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, some people asked for a zoom in on the artwork. So these pieces I did a while back. So there's the yellow flowers. Um, and here are the pink ones. So that's a close up. There you go. Close up of the artwork in my handmade wood frames. I made the stands for these flower pieces and they're done. So this is what a stand looks like. It's very basic and simple and elegant, which is exactly what I was looking for. Um, and that's what the art looks like sitting on it. What I like about these stands is that they fade into the background. They're almost invisible when you're looking at it. You really don't see it at all. But the art just sits on it just like that. Um, what's left is to finish the art. I have to sign it and seal it and then make the box, which is up next. I like creating the entire experience from the artwork to the frame to the box that comes in. So this is a prototype I'm working on. It has the logo. It's a little misplaced. I'm going to fix that in the next revision. And you open it up. And some tissue paper. I'm trying to do this well. And there's the artwork. I typically put a thank you note right in there. And if you pick it up, you get the stand as well. So that's what it looks like when you buy a piece of my art. Quick update tonight. The frames are done. They're boxed up and ready to be delivered. Um, I went with a holographic logo. I think I'm showing you the color shift there. Really, really like the way these came out. I didn't do much drawing today. Um, spent some time in the wood shop though. Made two more frames. Just need the uh, frame hangers and to stain them. But they're almost done. So, staining is next tomorrow. I'm on a roll with frames, so I figured I'd just keep going. So this is what one of my finished handmade wood frames looks like. Artwork matte, plexiglass. This is the back. It's a press fit, hanger hole, logo. And if you remember, this is the paper version. Uh, obviously this is portrait and this is landscape, but otherwise they're identical. Same dimensions. It's basically a replica. This is what the frame itself looks like without the insides. So the frame and the backing plate, and it's a press fit, an exact press fit. So there's nothing that holds it in other than friction. There you go. And uh, obviously the artwork goes in here. And there's a stand. Voila. I know I've showed this recently, but since I showed you what unframed art looks like when you buy it from me last night, I figured I'd show you what framed art looks like when you buy it from me tonight. So here's a box of art. It's got the logo. Uh, so I make the box and I make the frame and I do the art. So let's open it up. There's tissue paper, and here's a thank you card. It's blank because I haven't filled it out yet. And here's the frame. <clears throat> frame dart. And inside is the stand and an insert so that the stand doesn't slide around. And that's what it looks like when you buy Frame dark for me. Oops. So let's package that back up. There you go. I almost forgot. I meant to show you the final piece in this four piece set. So let's take a look. Um, let's do a spin so you can get a good look. 
and I'll show you the top and the bottom. So that's what it looks like. I hope the owner is going to be very happy with these.